Hi, my name's Kevin. This is my Golf RSR. And I'm Alex. I'm the owner of Innovative Motorsports, and we are the ones that swap the car for Kevin. So we picked this car up as a family car, and I never meant to mod it. Like, one thing leads to another, right? And you start modding and modding and modding. The four-cylinder exhaust note just wasn't cutting it for me. And when you hear RS3s and TTRSs and DAZA motors, and the way they sound with like a proper exhaust, like the one Alex put on it, the downpipe and the, the midpipe, is just, it just sounds so awesome. It's nasty. Oh my God, go. <laughs> dude, that thing disappeared. Yeah, yeah. I know that's a lot for people to be like, oh, you spent all this money just for an exhaust note. Well, that's not just it. Now this is something super special, but I have like the ultimate exhaust note in a Mark 7. Most people want to know why not just buy a TTRS or an RS3. And to me, this is more unique. It was more economical for me because I'd already paid off the car. I had put a ton of work into it from whole new stereo system. I had done all these suspension mods, like super pro everything. Um, I'd already put in the, the Audi aluminum subframe, you know, the wheels, downpipe. I'd done a lot of work myself. This is absolutely beyond my own abilities and I, I recognize that. And that's where Alex comes into it. So my name is Alex. I'm the owner at Innovative Motorsports, and we specialize in swapping RS3 motors into Golf Rs. Basically, the whole process from start to finish is about a five-week process. We take a crashed RS3 or TTRS, take all the parts out of it, and swap it straight into your Mark 7 or 7.5 Golf R. We use the engine, trans, rear end, basically all the hard parts from the RS3 and make your Golf R an RS3. Without a check engine light on the dashboard, it's all emissions compliant. It's a full out nut and bolt start to finish swap. Both the RS3 and the TTRS are part of the MQB chassis that the Golf R is associated with as well. So when we swap this motor into the car, there isn't much custom fabrication or anything like that. The motor and trans pretty much bolt right into the car. That part is a really, really easy part for us. It's a little stuff that we do with the wiring and the software and stuff like that that kind of makes this really unique and a, basically a one-off project. Basically, the hardest part and the biggest roadblock of this whole entire sw swap is the wiring itself. The whole entire engine bay gets rewired. We cut the whole chassis harness, we re rewire the ECU connector from scratch, the fuse panel gets changed, basically, Everything in this area over here gets changed over and we re rewire from start to finish. That's basically the hardest part of the whole entire thing. And then we get into the software side of stuff to make the car flawless, but that's more stuff that we've had to develop and kind of work on to make the car perfect. So the car basically becomes an RS3 and there's a lot of stuff behind the bumper that you don't see that works because all the parts are so similar between Golf R and RS3. The core support itself is Golf R, but the radiator is RS3. So that kind of just sits right in there nicely. So it kind of goes with the theme of mixing and matching in MQB and everything just kind of working together in unison. The wiring is kind of the hardest part and what everyone's really afraid of. And we had to kind of do our homework and do research. And we downloaded the, the manuals for both cars. We went off, off of the PDFs on the car itself to see where the similarities are and the differences are. And we basically just started making notes. And from there we figured out how to make this happy in this car. It is a bit scary, yes, we, it is a big job, but that's kind of what we do. And we've done other swaps and this is kind of where we shine is in some of the wiring stuff and kind of the, the harder things that people might be afraid of that we kind of nerd out on and, and do, you know? <laughs> it's sort of the same money at the end of the day. When you look at how much a well option TTRS costs and you look at how much this swap is after you've sold off the parts that you have from the car, your own car, like I sold my motor, I sold my trans, I sold my rear diff, uh, you recoup a lot of costs there. So it kind of all comes out in the wash. And to me, it's the same money, you know? Yeah. So, so in this case, it's like, I just got exactly what I wanted. And, and now it's like super unique. I think it came out perfect. To go into a little more detail about costs, it could be a huge range because you could, source your own motor, source your own trans and diff, try to do this yourself, but then there's the, the question of the harness and all that, which only Alex's crew knows how to do at this point. Are you going to do your own labor? Can you do that? 
sometimes the motor is less money if you're buying just a motor and you're going to rebuild it. Other times you're buying a whole shell and you need to kind of sell things to recoup those costs. You might want to just put it in stock. Then again, you might want to go stage two. The range is huge. You can go from the lowest of like 15 grand if you're doing everything yourself to nearly 80 grand, depending on what you're, you're putting into it. Um, I feel like I found a sweet spot that was around 30K and that to me is worth it. You know, I can't do this myself. Alex has the know-how. Uh, my car came back immaculate. Like, is this a dailyable car? It absolutely 100% is. I daily it every day. I drove down from Boston to here, to North Carolina. We did a 15 hour drive without a hiccup. You can take it to the track. You can take it to go get groceries. As a matter of fact, we were at Lime Rock the other day and I did some track time. I'm at Wookiees now. You know, there are certain things that won't match up. You go into VCDS, you're going to have like things it's looking for, sensors I don't have. Things like adaptive cruise that I don't have in my car, you might have, like you might have the brain looking for it, so you might see something in VCDS, but it'll never pop up in the dash or be an issue as you drive the car. There's something about this motor and the way it delivers power that's different in the power band. It's just like beefier. Like down low, it has a lot of low end grunts. And then when the boost comes on, it's like an absolute animal. And it just pulls and pulls and pulls. And I'm not, like I'm at, I think, 500 horsepower at the wheels. It's a stage two 93 tune. It's a OTS tune from United Motorsports in Connecticut. It's probably somewhat similar power-wise to a Golf R stage three that has like an EQT XL turbo. But again, the power is different. It literally feels like it's clawing the ground as it goes and it's like pulling you. It has that sort of hand of God feeling like you're being pushed as you go. And I know a lot of people know that feeling, but I always felt like the four cylinder was a little bit like rubber bandy as opposed to this has more linear power and just, just pushes you. Our first swap that we did, this is actually the second one. Um, we're on three right now and we will have five by the end of next month. So we're, these are rolling out, but our first swap we did, it, we had the car up and running in two weeks. We had the car running, but didn't mean it ran right. And it didn't mean that everything was, you know, all the lights were off the dashboard and everything. And that was kind of the hardest part. We worked closely with United Motorsports. We developed some stuff and kind of figured out together what we needed to do software side to make the car happy. Because there's a lot of stuff going on in the background that people don't know about. And it's like stuff that's very complicated and all that to kind of figure out. But we spent the time and we put the hours in and it, it definitely didn't happen overnight, but you know, with the partnership with them has really helped out because now everything on the dashboard works. There's no lights, there's no EPC check engine, nothing like that. The car just works the way it should. The first time I drove this, I had a smile cheek to cheek and it was like, man, we did it. This is like the perfect swap. Actually, it was my first time at Wookiees. The roads here are incredible. Like the, the twists and turns, we don't have anything like this in New England that I'm aware of. So I might move down here with this car. It handles really well. Maybe the weighting of the engine has something to do with it too because the aluminum Daza block is lighter and the DQ500 might be a little bit heavier but it's lower in the engine so you're getting more weight down low. And I've removed a little bit of weight with like the battery. I, we put it in the back and I did a lightweight lithium. We take the battery and we actually put it into the trunk of the car like they do on the RS3. But the slick thing we do is we keep the factory jump point. So now if the, the car actually dies, you can jump the car from the bay. You don't have to get stuck trying to open up your trunk and crawl through the back or anything like that. You know, you've asked this uh, question to Kevin and you know, I kind of give my own opinion on this as, why would you do this, right? Why wouldn't you just go buy an RS3? Why wouldn't you go get yourself a TTRS? And my reason is, is this is way cooler, right? I mean, at the end of the day, you have a unique build with a good motor in it. When you compare the five cylinder to a four cylinder, you're, you're pretty much done around the 600 horsepower mark, somewhere around there. And yes, you can make more, but it's kind of a ticking time bomb. With this motor, you've just started at 500 horsepower. 500 of the wheels is just a, off the shelf, 93 tune, that just pulls like a freight train. And the car will spin all four tires off a of launch. It just, it makes this car unbeatable. It makes it really, really fun. It makes it everything that it should have been from the factory. You know, I'm into aesthetics. I'm a graphic designer by trade. So 
you know, I try to balance things out and not go too crazy. It's a little bit easy, but I, I just chose yellow as the like accent pop color for the car. I wanted it to be kind of neutral everywhere else and, and remove all other colors except for the yellow. The BFI shift knob and a carbon fiber wheel with uh, yellow stitching and like the yellow center mark. Went with some yellow brakes. I actually painted the RS cover myself. Um, I actually went a little crazy and dyed the um, air filter myself yellow. Uh, I got some fake it to make it Recaro seatbelt covers. So these are like kind of controversial. Um, they are WP Pro. They are Chinese or Filipino brakes. And I bought them because I think they look dope. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love the way they look. Honestly, that was part of it. And I did research. This company solely made brakes for like 30 years. I wanted to try them out. Um, I was able to get four corners. The backs aren't on yet. Um, I love the sun cut rotors are really nice. One of my goals was really, it was like a have your cake and eat it too build where I want it to look good, I want it to handle good, and I want it to be fast. Um, and I want it to ride somewhat OEM. It's a difficult thing, that's a, that's a big ask to have a really fast car that handles well, rides well, and, and does everything you want and is aesthetically pleasing. And it's been four or five years now, I've been just chipping away at every little thing, spending hours and hours and hours on every little detail. I just jumped right into it. I was kind of like, here we go, and, and decided to do it. And honestly, um, it's perfect. I think, I think I'll have this car forever, honestly. I probably will be buried in it. So if you want to check out more of these cars and the different builds we, we are doing, you come check us out on YouTube. Uh, just follow Innovative Motorsports. We're on all social medias, Innovative Motorsports. Come check us out and see what we're doing, the cool things that we're building.